Costco. All right, recording. All right, so. 8.05, so we're gonna start. If uh, you're not cooking along, no problem. If you have any questions, guys, ask along. Um, the whole actual process of the making of the dinner or the meal, um, whenever you make it, is five minutes. The, the most important lesson besides knives you know, having good knives and sanitary uh, area to work in, right, is sauces. So any culinary program I've ever been to or um, any culinary book you open up, generally they're going to start with sanitary knives and then right into sauces. And the reason for that is because sauces is, you know, that's what you, you know, scoop up. You, you know, you, you know, you, if you, if it's really good, you're going to take that bread and you're going to like go in for an extra run. Right. And it could be Italian cooking or French cooking or Asian cooking or Mediterranean it doesn't matter. A good sauce can be either a salsa, right? A really good salsa, like a Mexican salsa. That's also a type of sauce. That's just their word for sauce, right? So what I wanted to show you guys today, and if you didn't see the live that I did in the group this uh, last week, I did one that was like a preview to tonight. So the, the last week, what, and I'll just you know, previously on. <laughs> I did not see that. <laughs> that's okay. And that's why we're going to go previously on. I made a stock and I, I made a chicken stock. And what I did was I took carrots, celery. Uh, we don't, Tanya doesn't like the flavor of cooked onion. So I use onion powder, thyme, parsley. And what I did was I ground it in oil very well. I didn't burn it, but I browned it very well. And because we wanted a dark sauce. So the reason why we brown it and we want a dark sauce is because we like very rich flavor. And right now I'm making another a sauce. It's just a vegetable stock. So the one that I'm going to use tonight is a chicken stock. It's actually sitting in the freezer. And when mm -hmm. I finished it, and what I'm going to do is I didn't finish it on the live. I'm going to finish it tonight so you guys can see how I make my own stock, right? Because this can cook here. It literally took me three minutes to get this going. And then it's just been sitting here for two hours, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's cool about this is if you invest five minutes, you can make something that's going to elevate your meals and all of them. So like, I, was, I don't remember who I was telling. I think it was you, Dawn. I'm yeah. not sure. But when I used to work at Kraft, which is, I don't know if you guys know who Tom Colicchio is from Top Chef, the bald guy. Yeah. So that's his restaurant. That's his mother restaurant. And we used to take a stock soap pot that was probably four feet high by like th two feet wide, three feet wide. And they would, you know, do veal, it would be a veal stock. And then on the other side of the kitchen in the saucing area, they had like six to 10, depending on the time of year, six to 10 pots with different sauces for short ribs, for chicken, for gnocchi. But that one stock was like, what we call the mother sauce, the mother stock for all those other sauces. <laughs> so when you make your stocks, what's cool is you can make them based on your flavor. So Levita said the other day that she was making a, a shrimp stock out of the sheet, out of shrimp shells that she was using. Great. You can use just vegetables like I'm doing now. You can use fish bones. 
So if you don't know what to do with your fish head and fish tail, or if you go, when you buy your fish, ask the guy if he has any fish heads or fish tails. And you can take those because they will charge you like a dollar fifty for it. And you put them into your pot and you let them cook a little bit. Now, the darker they are prior to adding water, the darker your stock will be. So if you want a nice, clean, clear stock, right, that goes with everything, you make a nice, clear stock. You add, you can add the water first and then all the vegetables and just boil everything and it'll still pick up the flavor. Or like I did, cook it, then add the water. And then that water, and you can see if you go back to that live, actually, I posted a picture of what the water looks like before I really brought it up, before I cooked it down. So the idea is you'll see like it's really brown and like rich. You could see the flavors in it. Like you look at it and you could see it has a lot of flavor as opposed to like maybe a broth that you buy or get at the diner or at the supermarket that's like very pale and almost diluted and you can taste the sodium in it that they use to add flavor to it because you know they're doing bulk they're not sitting there cooking down unless it's a very fit like an emerald right he's you know you can buy the emerald chicken stock or the supermarket chicken stock but one is 99 cents and one is 4.99 so most of the time people are buying that 99 cent one, right? So that's the idea is you can, for your 99 cents, make a very, very nice one. And that's what the idea is behind taking something as simple as and flavorless as chicken breast and then just adding a teaspoon or a tablespoon of grape upon, depending on how, how strong you like it, spicy mustard, or you could do honey mustard. You could do, like I said, you could do wine, you could do orange juice, you could do whatever your palate desires. Tonight, I just picked honey mustard because, or Dijon mustard, because everyone has mustard at home. Even if you don't eat, like, even if you're a bachelor, like, you know, Will is a bachelor, but he eats very good for a bachelor. But most bachelors just have ketchup and mustard in their house, right? You open the fridge, there's nothing but ketchup and mustard. So even the most basic bitch can make this recipe. <laughs> so I have my chicken. I have my parsley. Mm -hmm. I, add, I added garlic. Sorry. I, you don't have oh, to garlic. add the garlic. I'm sure everyone, again, some things that most people should have in their kitchen. And again, that's what, like, I want to push you guys to learn how to do is yeah, there you go. perfect. We don't even need a lot. So, um, so if you want to make your stock now, I don't know if you're cooking with me. Is anyone cooking with me or everyone's just Sarah is cooking along? Awesome. Are you going to make the stock right now? I'm cooking. I can, awesome. but I also have this stock that's pretty Perfect. decent. It's I got it at Costco. I love this. Stock. That's and and I love it too because that's what I use as well. And like, you know, just to go back into like stocks for two seconds before we jump into the cooking portion, guys. You know, so buying a stock, right, at Costco is convenient because it comes in a package with a lot more. It's, but. You know, and I know like Will cooks a ton of rice and I do too. So if I want to make a really nice rice, like I did the other night, I did a cilantro lime rice, but instead of water, I did chicken stock because I had so much stock that I, because I, I knew that I was going to prep stock for the week and I knew I was going to prep stock again tonight. So I was like, all right, might as well use it. So the idea is, like, if you're going to make soups, rice, steam your vegetables. So, you know, you could steam your vegetables in wine. You could steam your vegetables in broth. And if it's, you know, think about a really good soup, right? That broth has been, you know, 
we talk about like pho or um you know any type of like ramen that the broth sits mm-hmm. there for hours and hours and just picks up a ton of flavor with making a mother sauce you don't have to do that you're making a sauce yes you can cook it for hours upon hours but with this you could just do it for two hours on a high heat medium heat and then it'll cook down and i'm going to strain it right now and you'll see how it looks right easy to strain and then it's clean and what i'll do is which i'm going to use tonight is i'll put it in an ice cube tray and I'll have servings to, so if I'm making just dinner for Tanya and I, that's a small dish, then I can use the ice cubes. If I'm making a chicken stock, then I'll go and I'll get the big, what, you know, what didn't go in the ice tray. So I'm, I'm saying for like proteins, if I'm making a beef stock and I want to make grill my, or saute my steaks and just add one cube of beef stock, from the freezer to finish off that as a sauce done. And now you've elevated your steak, which already tastes great, but you've elevated so much by adding that veal stock or beef stock. We know what, what eventually becomes a demi-glaze, right? So that the demi-glaze is like, what looks like a, a, a glaze, like you put on icing on a glaze on cinnamon rolls, you can relate to that. Now mm-hmm. imagine instead of sugar and water, it's carrots and celery, and that's where the flavor comes from instead of the sugar. And that water over time has thickened up where it becomes uh, what's called a demi glaze is that a good example a good breakdown of so i'm going to take my pot i'm going to take my stock and i'm going to strain it really quickly for you guys and and that's what i said like this Our power actual just flickered and it hasn't been doing that this whole time we might lose power so if i disappear i'll just update y'all on my phone but yeah all right sorry step away Right. Um, so, what was it? What was I saying? Sorry. So this whole process, me actually in front of the stove, is like five minutes, literally, cutting the carrots, and celery, and you don't even have to cut them that much, because guess what? They're going right here. And that's why you don't really have to spend so much time cutting them. You just want to cut them so that there's room in the pan when you put everything. Let's because let's say you're making a dark stock, and then everything goes to the sink. But that will go to the garbage. And it shouldn't be too hot. And then I can show you guys. You know, nice clear broth. Mm-hmm. You can see it's got some nice color. Let me turn this down a little bit. You see, it's got some nice color. And color, hey, is generally flavor. Not a racist <laughs> comment, by the way. It's just food. Yeah. So, yes, yum, Robin, that's right. So that's my, my vegetable stock that I have that I'm not going to use this one, I'm gonna use what I have in the fridge as far as chicken stock, but just wanted to show you, like literally, there, all that's in there, and I, I guess I'll, I'll show you, because it's really easy, is just some carrots, garlic, celery, thyme. Remember, I don't use onion because Tanya doesn't like cooked onions, so I use onion powder, but that's not in there. That, obviously gets caught with everything. This is a, what's called a chinois, which is a fancy French strainer. And you could see how um, fine it is. Mm -hmm. And it will, it will um, paper everything down. So even if I pour the sauce to the side, everything will still come out of the bottom.
so, it's it is what it isn't because it's just a strainer and it's just <laughs> taking five minutes at some point throughout your day to mm-hmm. get vegetables and water in a pot and let it cook for hours yeah so there's little vegetables i just threw out i could use for that <laughs> but that's all right lesson yeah. learned right Mm -hmm. take the next step forward so i'm just gonna and the same thing can be done with like oils right um if you want to make a nice flavorful oil you could put garlic and thyme and peppers and all and then strain it strain the oil and like what i do is then i have like a confit garlic and jalapeno mix and And the rest goes in here. So that way I can drizzle it on my pan and it's a flavored oil already again, like taking my dish and just a simple olive oil and a little bit, that extra two minutes or three minutes that I spent to put garlic into a pan, turn the heat on, let it cook for 30 minutes, turn it off, strain it, which literally takes five minutes of my time maybe allows me to enjoy my food more. And that's, you know, why, and I, you know, like Will has spoken about taking your past and your present and bringing that and making that you, right? What works. And like, when I used to do Sunday night food preps, it's not like I was, you know, making bad food prior, but you know, like ringing your ting, and this is something that I enjoy is like elevating my food, right? And that's what I, I, I want Buff on a Budget to be is like, take this food that is so boring at home, the chicken and, you know, your meatballs or whatever it is, your fish, you know, a, a stir fry, and just adding, you know, a teaspoon of ginger or uh, garlic oil or a chicken stock with a little mustard to take your dish from, oh man, I'm really not looking forward to having chicken again tonight, to, oh man, what am I going to make with this chicken tonight? Right? So, take my chicken, see this knife. I'm going to delay my boobs. Did you say fillet your boobs? Yep. What does that like? Just checking. <laughs> okay. You're having nice. Yeah. So I'm going to take my hand, press the bottom of the chicken, and I'm going to run my knife through the center like that. Like such. I've got you my card. I, I don't need to do anything with it. Right card, now. no, you don't need to do anything with it. You need to, everyone, preheat your pan. I can preheat my pan. So. This is, do we, are we making, right now it's a chicken, we're not making the stock, we're making the chicken and we're going to do. Correct, because we're going to, okay. because. You have everything ready yep. to stock, mm-hmm. literally, while the chicken is sauteing. We're going to do the same thing with a big pot, right? So next to your pan, you can put a big pot. I wasn't sure if you had your ingredients for the stock as well. But now that we know... Got all the things and very Eric very kindly got everything prepped for me so that I could literally you the man Eric you the man nice I, <laughs> I will good, tell good. him <laughs> I got my good earbuds man. in all right let him know he's cool it's cool in my book it'll be cooler if you play predator with us but <laughs> <laughs> eventually I asked him yeah. to design a, a shirt that says press square and I think he's working on something Oh my god, that would be so unreal. Yes, don't so cool. don't shit. It's a work in progress. 
Yeah. You know. Sure. You just announced it to happen. everybody. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's just as chickens on this Bring live. On this well, I, I don't know how to send this live, but it will be in the in the group for those that want to watch it okay. when they're feeling ready for it. All right, so I got a good amount of chicken boob here for myself, but I'm not going to cook it all. Cracking me up with your chicken boob. <laughs> oh, chicken breast, okay? For the PC chicken boob's way funnier. <laughs> it is. I've never called it chicken breast. I mean, that's weird. <laughs> nah. Chicken boobies. Oops. I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> As inappropriate as we get. All right. <laughs> All right. So, Sarah. Yep. Getting there. You can preheat your stuff. Uh, yeah, take your time, girl. I got it. It's uh, preheating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wash my stuff. hands. We got chicken boob all over them. Maybe I really should get a fillet knife. Oh no, that worked out just fine though. Well, here's the secret. Always use a bigger knife than whatever it is you're cutting. Oh, that's a good point. Good tip. That makes sense. Little fun fact there. How's it going over there, Jason Park? Where are you at? Laying the chicken right now. Have the chicken. Right. Cutting out the parsley. Here's the deal. If you guys want, what you can do is, so my pan is at like a medium heat over here. What you mm -hmm. can do is you can chop your, if you have celery, carrots, and whatever vegetables for your stock. If you're making a dark stock, go ahead, throw a little bit of oil in the, in the pot and throw the vegetables in first. Okay. Now, what I do is, and you're free to do this as you please is what I like to do is like a two for one kind of thing is when I make my chicken stock, I'll put a whole chicken breast in there and then that'll actually go as pulled chicken. When I go and take everything out of the pot, I'll just take that chicken right out into a container and that will go as pulled chicken for the week because now that chicken has got a ton of flavor. And, if, you know, and we can go into this another time, but actually, if you're looking to lose weight um, or get more protein in, pulled chicken is the best way to do that because you've already broken down all the connective tissue inside. And so it's easy for your body to digest. That's why bodybuilders, for example, eat a lot of ground meat, right? Versus just steaks because that connective tissue is already broken down and they can control the percentage of fat that's in the ground meat as well. I have no idea. That makes sense. It's more accessible. Yep. Yeah, just less for, you know, as you eat, right, when let's say you eat a steak, you don't get all the protein from that steak because your body's utilizing a lot of protein to break down that meat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, if it doesn't, it's facts. Look it oh, up. It does make sense. No, yeah. no, it's, <laughs> so that's why we want to, when we're trying to like, eat clean and do stuff like that in the sense that's why it's good to do stuff like this as far as chicken and if you think about it like a lot of caribbean countries they do a lot of stews mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and some obviously some people are overweight but some people are not a lot of obviously a lot of countries do stew. a lot of uh you know Eastern European countries, right? A lot of yeah. borscht and, you know. But how many carrots? How, many, how much? So how many? Was it, it two, three, six so of celery? 
so two sticks of celery and one carrot is really all I use because that, again, you know, it's right now you and Eric, how big of a stock do you want to make, right? So nothing too Eric. crazy. Last time I made stock, I borrowed my mom's stock pot and then just like boiled it down until I had, I put it in like four ounce containers that I could then rehydrate, but that's, yeah. I don't know that I have room in the freezer for that right now. Well, so. and that's why it's like, let's, you know, that's why I say don't use a lot because an ice tray is really, if you're doing this, if you're eating a good amount, this is easy to do. You're going to get used to doing it and you're going to be like, oh, this takes no time to do. And mm -hmm. therefore, I'm going to do it on a monthly or biweekly basis. Cool. And then going through an ice tray of stock is nothing. Yeah. I All like right. the idea so, of the ice cubes. Yeah. It's definitely, again, super uh, space uh, pro, you know, taker, right? We don't want to take up too much space in our in our freezer, like you said. So I'm going to just literally put salt and pepper on this. Nothing else. Um, the stock and the sauce is going to speak for the protein. Okay. I like a lot of pepper, so I do a lot of pepper. And then I do... You've already got your chicken in the pan, or it's going in the pan? After no, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm waiting on you guys, but I'm just seasoning my fish, my chicken, excuse me, okay. and breaking up some garlic. Jason Park's like, all right, Jesse, step out of the camera now. And then he turns the camera back on. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, all right, take some instruction, Jesse. What Amir is telling you to do. <laughs> and, then, and then he takes the camera off. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kicked off camera. <laughs> he's like, Jesse, get out of here. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> he's like, listen, she's the one that cooks. <laughs> See the sourdough she made? Is that sourdough? Yeah, nice. See? Just prepping the broccoli that we're going to use as a side. That's where I didn't want to bother with all the water washing. Nice. So we can finish up our uh, chicken stocks once we get the chicken on the pan. So uh, you should have all your vegetables and stuff in the pan, in the pot. How are we doing, guys? Okay, how the, I'm getting the onion in there now. Is it just in no, the again, so it, again, like, like ninja. <laughs> Boom, in there. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like one of those. <laughs> quick again the beauty of making a stock is you're not going to be saving those vegetables you're going to be tossing those vegetables so give them a quick chop and right in the pot Does not, garlic go in there too yep Scan all of it. Fucking get crazy. Get funky. And that's what's cool is like, if you want to put a jalapeno in there, you could put a jalapeno. If you want to put a jalapeno, but de-seed the jalapeno, you could do that. If you want to put cilantro, or you want to put leeks, or you want to put ginger, or star okay. anise, it's, where, it's what your mouth desires what your palate likes. And that's why I say, don't make a big stock, make a bunch of stocks. 
right? Have a fish stock and a chicken stock, have a beef stock and a chicken stock, have a vegetable and a chicken, whatever. And then, hey, what are you guys in the mood for? Oh, we're in the mood for a really nice soup, like a butternut squash soup. Use a nice vegetable stock that you used. Or, you know, Jason, you and, and uh, Jesse like to eat a lot of meat, right? So you cook a lot of steaks, man. You should have a veal stock or beef stock in your fridge at all times. Okay. Because that's easy money that you could just pull out like two, two minutes add to the end of your cooking and elevate your dinner at home, especially now when we're in quarantine i know you guys everybody still has the ability to go out and bring in food but to me the apocalypse well (laughs) yes but to me it's like you know and this is what i was saying um this is how you connect with your food right by by creating that that mother sauce and then falling in and that's how you you know it's easy to fall in love with cooking because you have to cook it's just learning how to fall in love with it like anything else so i'm excited about the oils yeah for sure and that's again you know something that we'll go into for sure because it's super easy and it would be a shame not to so i have my this is a garlic and jalapeno oil that literally like i said just i put a jalapeno and some garlic and oil and let it cook for 20 minutes on low heat i'm gonna put my once my pan gets my oil's gonna get hot in just a second once that goes in the chicken will go in then i will so the season i have i only season one side i'll put that side down then mm-hmm. I will take my salt and my pepper and I will mm-hmm. season it in the pan. And the reason for mm-hmm. that is because I'm going to use this pan as flavor later. So the pan's already, you can see the oil starting to separate. Um, are you using like olive oil or grapeseed oil? Are you using olive oil there? So this is an olive oil, like I said, that I, because uh, okay. I'm only cooking this on a medium heat. But okay. you could do. You hear me? Oh. Yeah. So, okay. so, the reason, like I said, I was going to add the salt and the pepper after is because that pan is going to be a, 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 a space that I'm going to build my flavor off of, right? And what I mean is we're gonna be feeling, cooking with a pan sauce, right? We say we're gonna be doing a pan sauce, which is using the fond, using that, the browning of the chicken. So that's why it's on a medium heat, because I want it to brown slowly. Mm. And it will brown slowly, which means it will leave browning in the pan. So it's on a medium high heat right now. And it's good. And you can see. Let me bring this over. You can see it's starting to build a crust on the bottom. I don't know if you can see or not. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, Would you. Here's how we here's how we do this. The chicken, right, or steak or any fish, like in fish, for example, it's like a eight two. On chicken, it's uh, you know depending on the thickness of the chicken, but this will be like a six three, a, a seven two. And what I mean by that is it's going to be on one side for six or seven minutes until you like you'll see it the the color is going to change from the bottom to the top right we saw when i showed the the camera the bottom was white and the chicken was still raw on bottom on top and as it cooks on that medium heat that whiteness will start to come over the top edges 
and start to come towards the center of the top as it, as it like it's cooking, which means the bottom is nicely browned. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it, just when it's about to be white on top, I'm gonna turn it over and let it cook that last two minutes. So that's why I say seven, two. So seven minutes on one side, letting it cook all the way through and then two minutes to finish it. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yes. Because most of the heat has already gone through the meat. Correct. We've, we've cooked. Her. That's how we know we cook things through. Instead of cutting the piece of fish or meat or chicken in the middle to see if it's cooked through. Does that make sense? <laughs> Yeah. what I do all the time. <laughs> the well, that's your, uh, uh, drumsticks, the bone in, how does that affect with like the cooking times? Same, same thing. As you see that browning come around, right? And with a bone in, you'll see blood drip out. Does that make sense, Jason? Makes sense. I'll show this in another minute, but you can, if you're looking at your chicken, then it should be already starting to change a little bit of color towards the top as it continues to cook. And then we have our gray coupon, our parsley. We can, um, let me get this out of here. Get a fresh cutting board. I still got a couple pieces of chicken that need to go in the pan next. Is yeah, it okay to do that's rounds? Fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, you know, that's again, like with this, um, you kind of have to do rounds because you don't want the chicken to steam. You want nice yeah. brown chicken. Um, mm -hmm. And then it doesn't matter. You will, you know, Sarah, I will hold off or I will walk you through your sauce making process after I've done mine because that's what we're here for. If they all help each other, like feel comfortable in this process and not rush. Don't rush your chicken. Let it cook through. And here's the deal, right, Sarah? So let's say you and Eric are really hungry and you do want to join us. Let's say we're all eating together at the same time. We want to do a virtual dinner together. Or you do want to eat and you want to let the rest cook in the oven, right? So you take your chicken that you're making. You make your two breasts. You preheat the oven at 350. You do your two breasts that you and, or however many chickens that you and Eric are going to have. You put those on the plate. You do a quick sear on however many pieces you have left. You put those in the oven. So while you and Eric are eating dinner, that chicken is co cooking. Oh, and you don't have to, and you've, and you've given it a quick sear and you can flavor. still make your sauce. Yes, exactly. So don't you, rush your you, chicken bib, Sarah. That's right. So we're in no <laughs> rush. Take a look at my chicken boobs. Don't rush your chicken boobs. <laughs> they're not rushing. I think they're taking nice. their time. They're not rushing. They're American chicken. <laughs> 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 and look I, I you know and i can do the same thing because i have the same issues as you have sarah right so we're in this together sister so in the meantime i'm going to take my parsley so like you see i don't even in reality we could have been making our stock now right mm -hmm. while this chicken is cooking on that one side I got my veggies in here. They're getting nice and brown. Yeah, see the conseil. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm going to take a little parsley, not too much. So, Amir, would you look at this real quick? I need to start. Yeah. It. One second. Um, More. No, you want that white to be like literally coming over the corners on the top. Once it okay. comes over the top corners, that's that's a flip. Thank you. That way you don't even need to, that. That's like you don't need a timer, right? That's 
you know, in, at home, we can put a timer on and walk away. But in a professional kitchen, there is no, there is none of that, right? Yeah. So you have to know what it looks like. And you can walk away from it to do something else because there's a million things going on, a million different tables that you got to be cooking for, that things have to come out at the same time. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's knowing, okay, eight minutes is roughly what it takes for a pizza fish to cook over and then another three to finish or two to finish, depending again on the thickness of the fish. So if I'm doing that, my chicken takes approximately 10 to 12 minutes. My steak takes about, you know, depending on the, on the cook, you know, eight to 16 minutes. So visual is very important. Like seeing it. how it looks. What are we doing with the parsley now, Amir? Um, so the parsley is actually, we're going to chop. If you want to put some in your stock, you can put some in your stock. But we're going to chop it because it's going to go at the end with our garlic and our grey poupon as our sauce and our chicken stock. So, How much parsley should we be using, Amir? Uh, so here's what I'm going to tell you, and this is what kind of I, I gave Sarah this kind of answer when she asked me about my recipe the other day. You know, it's important to have recipes, but it's more important to know what you like. So if you like a lot of herbaceous flavor in your food, then I would say, hey, put a little bit more. If you want to just hint of flavor, then put a little bit less. So I would go from a tablespoon to three to five tablespoons, depending on how green you want the chicken, how, again, how, how herbaceous you want it. Do you want it like a pesto Dijon sauce, or do you want it just to be a hint? Because I I like a lot of herbs, so I'm going to do a lot of herbs. You know I'm herbaceous. All right, you're, you're herbaceous. You okay with <laughs> I did about two tablespoons. How's that? So you have an idea where I'm at. And two cloves of garlic. I'm going to do. You don't have to do garlic, guys. I have no Korean. Like, that's right. You're not Asian if you're not putting garlic in there. Yeah. And for drumsticks, it should fall around that six to two. Six no, to two. drumsticks are going to cook a little bit longer because it's on the bone. So you're going to probably yeah. go about eight and eight. Eight and eight? Yeah. Okay. On a medium heat, just let it make sure it's cooked through. Make sure all that blood comes all the way through. Yep. And actually what I would do if I was you, because you're using drumsticks, once we finish that sauce, I would put those drumsticks back into the sauce and let them cook in there for another three, three to five, sure. just to pick up a ton of flavor. Because it's hard, to, you know, again, collagen, right? We were talking about that earlier. You're hard to penetrate that skin, that fat, you know, that, that thick meat versus the breast, which should be very thin and cook through very quickly. to um, finely dice the garlic? Uh-huh, because we're going to be putting that into our sauce. Just like a nice quick chop. So let me bring this over so you guys can see what's going on. You can see the chicken is starting to turn over you see the mm-hmm. white starting to come over the top yes no maybe. yeah and you can see the, the pan is getting nice and brown you should have been able to see that what are we doing over there sarah Fresh and garlic with my hand. Just right. break up the bulb. 
there and I'm singing chop and broccoli, chop and broccoli, chop and garlic. Put my chicken. Just to show you guys how nice and golden brown it is. How are we doing over there with your fish, Dawn? We're cooking. Oh, so I don't know if you guys can see my chicken. Oh, you nice can see golden brown. Oh, that's pretty. Pan's got nice browning on it as well. Smells <laughs> fantastic, of course. Not good. And again, yeah, like sir. I just want to yeah. stress this, you know, and I can't stress enough. Like this is just as basic as it gets, guys. You know, having. And that's why you don't have to make your own stock. <laughs> you can, you know, buy a, a little can in the, from the supermarket. But, you know. No, we need, we need remedial. <laughs> I need remedial. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if, if you think that making a stock is too much for you, like, you think that's, like, a big step, then don't make a stock. Buy it. No, I'll try that. You know, but... Starting with a small, a small pot with just some leftover vegetables, you know, for a dark stock, cook them a little. For a light stock, don't. Water, two, three hours. Strain it. You're home, you know. I started getting a um, a local CSA box. And sometimes yeah. they send more fruits or more veggies than I than I use. Like it might be like too many carrots or too many parsnips or whatever. But I could totally use that for. Um, well, you know how many stuff. how many people get like CSA and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. I'm like, just throw it in some water, boil it, and make a sauce. Uh, those are my brain went. I'm like, oh, I'm still using yeah. this for my next box. And those greens that you chop off the vegetables, guess what? Those go in the stock too. Those are I'm full excited. flavor. I have a baggie in the fridge of like chicken bones, like from one to three chicken. Yeah, bones. I save man. the carcasses and then I save the ends of like my veggies, like the stem of the onion or the carrot or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, this is as the fundamental foundation of cooking, right? Like I was saying in the beginning. Every book you're going to open, every cooking class, every serious cooking class you're ever going to take, you know, they're going to cover sauces. It's, it's what makes the dish because everything else is just, yes, obviously you want a good quality piece of fish. You want a good quality piece of chicken or a nice piece of steak. Those are always, you know, grass fed versus corn fed. Like stuff like that is going to help yeah. as well. But the stuff that's going to elevate it to beyond, to where people are like, again, talking about it, taking the extra bread and sopping up that sauce, that's what we want, right? That's so when we have guests over, we make dinner for the one we love, they're like, wow, that was so good. Is there any more of that sauce left? Because <laughs> I know I have a wife that loves sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it browned well, I mean. Love it. So you can add that water into the stock if you're ready to do that. My chicken is just about ready to cook, so I'm going to wait, obviously, for you guys. So I'll add in another piece of chicken in here while I'm doing that. But Should I I'll take mine out because they're done? 
think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, are you going to continue to cook your chickens or you want to go into the sauce? I'm going to get the other ones. Well, yeah, cool. That's fine. I'm into that too. Cause like I said, so I'll just show you guys what my pan looks like. Nice and brown. You look at look at all that browning. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. just a shit ton of flavor, guys. Okay. So simple addition of the chicken broth. So this is now just chicken broth, Dijon mustard, parsley, and garlic. Like that's all that's left to do here. Okay. I don't know where your fish is at. In the pan or in the saucepan? I'm sorry, sir? Are we putting that actually into the actual uh, frying pan or in the... Yes, saucepan? but first, so the first thing we're going to do, so we're waiting, um, Sarah's got some more chicken. Do you have more chicken to do as well, Jason? Yeah, it's probably like three minutes away. That's okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll hang out. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, it's okay. okay, and guess what? It's all good right here. But then once we get to mixing the broth and everything, it will be in the same pan or it will be in a saucepan? It, in the same pan? It, no, it's, everything's going into the pan that we're cooking. It's a one, this is a one sauce meal. And uh, today right. I use a nonstick, but probably in the future I should just use a steel pan, huh? Yeah, I like everything, the steel all pan. All the browning will stay on there. Well, this, this, the nonstick pan will, will have browning as well. Yeah. Just not, it's just, you know, you know, if you have it, use it. It's just not as visually sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not visually sexy. The nonstick compared to having it on the steel. Yeah, it's okay. Because right now, if it's mixing in there, all the cleanup is easier too, right? <laughs> well, in the nonstick, it's a lot easier. So Sarah, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking those other pieces of chicken, I'm salting them off, and I'm putting them, I'm just giving them a nice browning in the pan. And then they're gonna go into this aluminum tray that I'm preheating the oven at 350 for. And th those will cook while we all do our thing here. So same thing like I was telling you, instead of me going and sit down and eat dinner, I'm just gonna continue the session, but same process. Right, that chicken that I, I'm not going to currently is going to go in to the oven and in 25 minutes it'll come out. Okay, I've got my oven turned on too. Is that what I should do with my other chicken or should I just? Uh, that's up to you. Like... I'm just waiting for Jason, so I'm taking the opportunity to make my other okay. chicken as well. Okay. Because it's going to, again, I'm only, I'm only coloring it giving it the, a quick sear on each side and then it's going to go in the oven to finish cooking. So whenever Jason's ready, it can come off the pan and the pan will be free for the sauce. If that makes sense. Yeah. So that's why I say like, you can still make your sauce and just make in more sauce and leave some obviously in the pan for the, the that leftover chicken that's going to go in the oven. Man, this smells amazing. <laughs> Is that how you always prepare your chicken when it goes into the oven? It's like you sear it on both sides and then put it in? No. This is if, um, you know, again, if this is if you're not in a rush, this is like Sunday night food prep, right? That one yeah. dish that you want to make or if you want to make a really nice dinner for, you, for the spouse. But what I like about food prep in general so like i can do this right and then that'll be like my really that'll be like my treat meal in in a sense and then everything else i can like bake off let's say vegetables or fish or or meat but i don't know i i it, it really depends on the occasion. If you're trying to just, if you're doing like a whole bunch of stuff, then it's not happening like this. 
But if I'm just doing a nice dinner for friends, then yeah, then I'll sear everything off. I won't even do what I'm, what I did with the first one. I'll sear everything off, put it in the oven, let it cook, <laughs> make my sauces, make my other side dishes. You know, I'm, most people don't utilize the oven like they should. You know, the pan is for quick cooking. And if you're making a dinner for 20 people, 10 people, five people, you shouldn't be using a pan unless you're using like three pans, right? A pan can fit maybe two four ounce pieces of protein on it, three at the most, and then you're crowding it, right? So Mm -hmm. if you have five people over for dinner that's and if it's a guy you need more than four ounces of protein you need eight six to eight ounces that means it's going to be maybe one piece in the pan so now all of a sudden you're like having to constantly cook off and put to the side so you might as well use the oven Mm -hmm. anyway otherwise food's gonna right that's why people make roasts and stuff like that because for a lot of people, it's just more convenient and time sensitive to do it that way, right? Makes sense. So I'm, I've, I'm ready whenever you guys are ready. My chickens are, my other chickens are browned. How are we doing, Jason Park? Just give me the thumbs up or thumbs down. Because you're on mute. Thumbs down. Okay, no problem. Take your time. The downside to this kitchen. Yeah. Oh, go How ahead, are we Jason? doing, Sarah? Oh, two minutes. Two minutes, okay. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm doing good. It's just that heating vent right there is blowing all the hot air <laughs> on I'm the, sorry. the hot stove. And I'm like, I'm dying for here. I'm like getting ready to do this in my underwear. Open a window, right. you'll be good. <laughs> right? A real uh, kitchen experience. <laughs> yep, wouldn't make it, would die. <laughs> but otherwise all your chicken, <laughs> all your chicken is uh, cooked off, yes? Uh, I'm, I'm about to flip this, these guys over and I might just whack up the heat on them. Yeah, it's getting hot in here. Remember, don't you don't have to rush it. It just needs a little browning because it's still gonna brown in the oven. Don't rush your this boobs, is, Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> keep your boobies in. Don't don't get your boobies in a bunch. I rush your boobs. All right, let me go get my my stock. Uh, time for some booty shorts I'll be right back <laughs> I love it <laughs> guys dinner and a show <laughs> <laughs> that's how we do it this dinner is and how a show we do it. <laughs> my so this was and again you can go back to the live from that I did last week so this is my stock that I froze Jason check it out (laughs) oh yeah all right okay chickens look good nice all right so Again, you can heat your oven if you want. All right, so everyone's pan should be empty. Is your pan empty? Not yet. Okay, no problem. Remember, just a quick sear. It could literally be 20 seconds, 10 seconds. This is for the remaining chicken, correct? This is for the remaining chicken, correct. Because the rest is going to go in the oven and sit and cook for 30, 20 to 30 minutes. I think mine 
were really thin. So honestly, I think the ones that are in now would probably get two done in the oven. I don't know. Look, I'll show you. Tell me what you think. Those look great. Yeah. Not too thin? Yeah, it looks fantastic. All right. Wonderful. All right. Pans are pans are ready. Yep. All right. So pan is should have like a little touch of oil. Nothing really. That oil should have been soaked up by the chicken, right? We don't want too much oil now because we're going to be adding uh, liquid, which means that it's going to obviously uh, have a reaction and possibly pop back at us. So watch when I add any kind, whether it's wine or stock or any kind of juice into a hot pan, I'm gonna take the pan off the heat and I'm going to do it from a distance where almost like in that, like a rear leg uh, weight shift. So pan is nice and hot. I'm gonna grab a couple of my, I'm gonna do four because I have about six pieces of chicken. So pan comes off the heat because the medium high. The okay, it's already smoking and bubbling. And I'm gonna swirl it around to get all that fond off the pan. And you can see it's all. How nice and brown that sauce is already. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now that, that pan is pretty much clean. See, pan's clean. Dang. And I'll just, now that my pan is, I don't have to worry that, about anything splashing back at me because everything is already reacted that how it's going to. I'm gonna let those mm -hmm. ice cubes finish cooking out. I'm going to take my Dijon mustard. Get ready for that. So once I see the stock start bubbling, mm -hmm. garlic and parsley in, 30 seconds to a minute, mix. Get your spatula ready. Your spatula. So once you see any bubbling forming, that means the pan is hot enough to add substance back in. If it's you see smoke, okay, it's getting hot, but we need to see bubbling, which gives us a sign that it's ready for our garlic and parsley. Now, the reason we don't add the garlic and parsley The reason we don't, yeah, there you go. So your pan's heating up a little faster than mine. That's okay, I'll turn up my heat. So you'll add your garlic and parsley, mm -hmm. let them cook for about 30 seconds. And then we'll add our Dijon, stir, cook down, dinner served. How much uh, Dijon should we be putting in? Two teaspoons? Yeah, about a teaspoon to two at the, at the most. Okay. So I've get, I'm getting my bubbles. That means I want to add my garlic and my parsley. Why mustard? Because it's an emulsifier, right? So it's going to help stick in our sauce. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Now you know. 
very chunky. The, the, the mustard is like chunks sauce, trying to get it to break up this. Yeah, it should actually look like this now. So. Not quite. Okay. You see Not how it's either. like we're... <laughs> Not yet. From here, just so I have the order correct. Let it bubble, put in the garlic and the parsley, and then add the... Sure. the Let the it sit for 30 seconds, and then Dijon, stir, and should be good to go. Like mine's good to go. Ah, that's my bad. I got the order wrong. Mustard in first. That's okay. Not the end of the world. <laughs> oh man, that smells absolutely out of this world. Mmm, that's not good. Here, you taught me how to cook fish without chopping it up. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's the so, little things in life. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So you guys can see what the final product looks like. Mmm, it's delicious. Oh, yeah. Delicious. Mine became yeah, a real sauce. Pretty. <laughs> Amir, you said that I should be cooking my chicken a little bit longer in the sauce after it's done? Yeah, it's because you have uh, your chicken. Uh, yeah, I see a little bit of blood still coming out, so. Yeah, so you guys can see that's. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. That's so pretty. Looks so good. Hopefully, hopefully you guys like the way it tastes, as good as it looks. water should I add to those veggies that are in the stock pot? Uh, uh, three, three quarts. Four. Like fill the pot just under the handles. Well, you don't want to make a lot actually. So um, let's say about three inches from the bottom. Three, three inches from the bottom? Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. Look at that. Money, money. Yeah, some spinach nice. over there. That looks great. Yeah, thank you. It's got a nice browning Delicious. on the fish too, huh? Yeah, I'm so excited. I've, I've never known how to do that. Definitely, if you can, put a picture up in the uh, in the thread. I'd love to see oh, it. Oh, like let me do that. that. Yeah. Just because it's now. a little bit, you know. Yeah, before you start ripping through that. Mm, how do you feel with this, so Jason? Good. All right, yeah, you got to cook that down a little bit more, buddy. Yep. Yeah, turn, turn up your heat a little bit. I'm going to take off the... Cook some of that down till the water starts boiling, till that stuff starts boiling a little. Mm. Good I'm stuff, Jason. That. That's with the chicken once it, once it simmered down, right? So well, you could add the chicken in now, actually, if you want. Okay. Because that, that way it'll cook down with the chicken inside, give it a little, little more flavor. That's delicious. I used um, honey mustard. Awesome. That's what again, that's what's, and that's really, again, why I spent so much time talking about that stuff in the beginning. It's like, yeah. you got to make it what you like. You know, I like a little more parsley. You know, I'm Mediterranean, mm -hmm. we put parsley on everything. So. You know, some people don't like parsley or cilantro, so maybe you just want to put a little bit just for flavor, not so much the color. 
Um, so what are the other uh, things you could use? You said wine. What else? Orange juice, apple juice, cranberry juice, pomegranate wow. juice, uh, okay. soy sauce. You know, again, it's wherever okay. you're, any, any, anything you can, you okay. know, I make an unbelievable orange chicken that I do uh, rosemary, coriander, garlic on the chicken. Wow. And then I'll finish it, the pan with a little bit of orange juice. Mm -hmm. and I'll thicken it up with a little bit of cornstarch and that's it mm. and it's like so fucking good sounds delicious well I, I request another sauce class like this because I like I can get creative I'll use this as bases for other things I'll share with what I do but but I, it helps to have ideas because then I can yeah so you know like and grow. What, 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 and again, this is what I wanted. What I wanted to do is teach you guys, right? Principle based is like now you can make your own sauces, and then what we'll do is we'll make salsas, we'll make like you said oils, we'll make dressings. Mm, excited about that, yeah. Marinades, different stuff to learn how to again make principally something that can go into whatever direction you want to take it, based on your palate based on mm -hmm. what you're in the mood for that night or you know winter time so thank you I mean, no problem robin any questions robin or anybody she has the boys over <laughs> yes no she's typing it in so i see her mm -hmm. typing in but does it, do you do I, sarah any questions how do you feel comfort wise with this would you that feel like easy. it was easy okay good i want to know feedback like how difficulty level could you see yourself making this again without me telling you hey wait for this wait for that yeah no super easy and i'll try the stock too i've been taking um stock to work with some sesame oil and and chili powder just as a soup to drink at work because i'm not enjoying eating at work because it's too much with the mask and all that stuff so I don't, i'm excited to make my own stock too so lots of tips here go yeah awesome thank you, you know, my pleasure and this is actually, you know, I know that you're not a huge fan of doing like meaty proteins, but this would be a great way for you to get more protein in by doing fish bones. Get your hands on fish mm. heads and fish bones and make mm -hmm. yourself some fish stocks mm -hmm. to, you know, but make them flavorful. So that way, when you're drinking it, it tastes good. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you. I feel very comfortable making this one again, but I would love to just understand better, like the mother sauce, and then how to just keep diversifying it. It makes sense to just add these different things, but I think by seeing different sauces from the same mother sauce, I'll understand it better. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, same we could degree. absolutely we could do that. So what we'll do is, Ew. so I'm going to do these on a weekly basis. Okay. Okay. So next week. Guys, we will use the mm -hmm. chicken stock that you made this week or this, the stock that you made this week mm -hmm. to build, to do a new dish next week. So we'll okay. still use chicken, but mm -hmm. we'll do, and I'll, I mean, how about this? What do you guys want to do since you guys are my audience? Do you guys want to do another pan sauce? Do you want to do something roasted in the oven? Do you want to glaze something? Um, ooh. Ooh, glaze, something. glaze or another pan sauce like I want to do a roast yeah. but I probably want to see something similar to this so I understand okay. like how to just keep adjusting it okay. yeah so what, same here so what we'll do is we're going to use chicken and I'll put it in the group just like I did this one uh, with the recipe so you guys have uh, a couple of I'll put it in by tomorrow morning afternoon the latest because tomorrow is a day off so i'll have some opportunity um we'll do something like the the orange chicken that i was saying how's that you know so you guys awesome. because that has sugars that will you'll see how that becomes a glaze yeah and actually what we awesome. could do is we could do like a citrus honey glaze mm -hmm. so guys what we'll do is the only ingredients you'll need for next week is whatever protein you're going to do, an orange, some type of peeler or zester that you can use, okay. and honey. 
That's it. So okay. protein, orange, and honey will be the additional ingredients um, besides chicken broth. Okay, we're going to use chicken broth again because we're right, going to yeah. use the chicken broth that we're going to make, right? Sweet. Can I just ask you a quick question? So this yes, is where sir. we have it now. Ooh, see. Dude, pretty. Yeah, there you go. That looks so great. Ready? Uh, give it like another minute to cook down that, okay. that sauce, and then you're ready to roll. Perfect. What I would do, Jason, is take that sauce and start dripping it over the chicken. Like start drip, take, like take pouring it, it over the chicken. Yeah. Basting it. Like basting okay. the chicken pretty much. Yeah, and just Got keep it. adding flavor to that chicken. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go eat. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm hungry. But this looks That's really, really good. Thanks, Amanda. Oh, oh, nice. Good. Oh, it's good, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. Guys, definitely yeah. take a picture of your food and put it in the group. That'd be great. Of course. Yes. Right. Awesome. Nice job, Thank you mom. so much, Amir. My pleasure, guys. You. Thank you so much. I'm Bye. so excited to eat right now. Me too. Have a good guys. night, everyone. See you next Bye. week. See you.